Good morning, everybody. Happy Wednesday to you. Hopefully you are having a fabulous day. Look at that sun shining right on my face. Sometimes I just do that just because I like to pretend I'm at the beach. I'll just do that really simply. I'll just come over here. I'll smile. I'll close my eyes and I'll just envision that I'm at the beach for a little bit. And, you know, people wonder like, Brock, how do you get over some of the stuff? What do you do? Like, that's the silly stuff that I do. I just do simple things like that. I close my eyes. I put it in the sun and I pretend I'm at the beach for a couple minutes and it gets me recharged up. So... It has been um, it's been a crazy uh, couple days. Hopefully, you all are having some crazy days in a positive way. I ended up doing uh, another coaching with my coach. He does he likes to do things spontaneous. He'll send me a text message. He's like, "Hey, are you are, are you ready to? I, I need to talk to you." And so we had a quick little coaching session yesterday with a couple other people across the country. It was phenomenal. Talking more about 2023, what that looks like. So I took a bunch of notes getting ready to share that with you guys next Thursday. So it's just pretty cool to being involved in that type of chemistry with him. And I'm so excited to share it with you guys next week. So hopefully uh, some of you can make it. I'm really looking forward to it. But today's Wednesday. It is enough of the talk about me. It We got the big man himself, Mr. Greg. He is leading us today on this uh, <clears throat> Wednesday. But I would just will say good morning to everybody. <clears throat> Make sure you say good morning to us. Throw it out there in the chat. Throw it out there in the group Facebook world. Chastity's there. Wendy, Sandy, Mike, Maritza. Maritza and I have been having some fun stuff dealing with uh, a relocation company. So, Maritza, thank you for being on here. Without further ado, Greg. Thank you. Thank you brother. Well, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. I, I wanted, I put a jacket on this morning because Sandy looked so, she was so looked all dressed up yesterday, looked professional. She always does. I'm like, I got to come on looking nice. And Brock is always looking good. And so I had to like step up my act, man. I was like, you know, <laughs> it's like coming on with t-shirts, but uh, some of the clothes I wanted to wear were in the dryer. So anyway, I wanted to wish you all good morning. Good morning to you all. Happy Wednesday, uh, post-election day. Uh, so hope you all doing well. Those of you on Facebook this morning, and we wish you all um, that things are going well for you. And as Brock said, there's a lot that's going on with uh, what he's doing right now with all these different coaching sessions that are happening. There was a really good seminar yesterday with uh, one of our lenders that talked about buy downs and uh, interest rates and all of that stuff. So a lot of good stuff. So this morning, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about some things personally in what I've gone through. I know we've had quite a number of people on here over the last week or two that talked about their stories and all of that. And But I, I want to basically frame this in a number of different ways. So I posted this morning on Facebook that we can all be senators if we strive for it. And so there are some people this morning who are probably scratching their head as to why certain people are now will be elected to be a senator. And this isn't a, this isn't a political statement in any way. Um, but if I was, if someone were to ask me who I thought would win some of the races in, in the Senate races that were happening around different states in the country, I would not have predicted what had, would happen. And so, of course, we, we, we don't know all the reasons why some people lost, some people won. and But I do want to point out specifically about the race that was going on in Pennsylvania, because many of you know that that was a very hot contested Senate race because we had we had Dr. Oz, which most of us know is, I mean, he's a household name. He's a doctor. He has his own television show. You know, I mean, pretty much everybody knows him. But it really wasn't so much the people of Pennsylvania knew him all that well because he was initially from New Jersey. And then you have a guy like John Fetterman, which all I've ever seen is him showing up at rallies or talks wearing some sort of a ghetto. He's not all dressed up. He doesn't have a suit, doesn't have a tie on. We know he went through a medical issue. He had a stroke not long ago. So if we just looked at the perception of what we saw between the Dr. Oz looking professional, wearing a suit and a tie, always looking nice, speaking well, and someone like Fetterman, who really was struggling now over probably the last three, six months of whatever he's going through, many people would say, I don't know how he's going to win the race, but he won. And so some of this has to do with tenacity, with drive, 
because one of the things that uh, that was brought up last week is about overcoming our obstacles, overcoming things. And so it, this is going to be a, a lot of discussions probably coming forward on really what happened in this race in Pennsylvania. Now, it doesn't matter what your political views are. The fact of the matter is, if you took John Fetterman and put him up on a poster, would you say that this resembles what a senator looks like? And I'm not here to judge, but I grew up in a different era, right? So we looked upon them, maybe not always so moral, but the way they conducted themselves and the way they looked, that they were polished, that sort of thing. So we're in a totally different culture now. And so that's, I wanted to lay that there. So I want to go back to you right now. I want to go back to you all the way to 2009. So 2009, uh, this is when I started going through my recovery of being an alcoholic. So I had a lot of challenges going on in my life and I had to make a decision. A lot of that was through some legal means that I had to get, change my life and get off my drinking. And so I was not at that point looking at 2009, I was looking to get into real estate, but I didn't make that decision. So we're going to fast forward now to about a year later. So in 2010, um, you know, I, I grew up in a, you know, in Warren in that area. And um, I had a, another sibling, had an older, older sibling, him and I were about 20, 22 months apart and it was just we had a small family just my parents and my older brother and myself growing up but in 2010 my father had gotten very sick they were my parents were, were older they were both in their 80s and so my father in 2009 right after I went through my recovery I had gone through a whole change in my life I went through a whole you know I went through a whole faith change I went through a salvation change in my life and right after that my father got sick he uh, he slipped, broke his hip, went into the hospital and he, and he had a lot of other issues. He had some kidney issues. He never recovered. So, and I was sort of like the one in the family because of, for whatever reasons, made, made a lot of decisions on what was going to happen, those sort of things. So about a year or so later, um, and, and this is going to be kind of a little hard to talk about. So and, and what's interesting is that when Sandy was talking about going through trauma, we don't always know. Trauma doesn't always knock on our door and tell us it's coming. <laughs> you don't get a text. You don't get an email and letting you know that something's going to happen. Because we know that if it does, then we're, easy, we're better prepared for it, right? We know that if something's happening, then we know how, how to over, try to challenge it, even if we can. But when we don't have that coming our way out of the blue, <laughs> you know, it can really knock us off our chair. So after that had happened, um, my, my father had passed away at that time in 2011. Uh, I was actually talking to my brother. This was right around Memorial Weekend of that week in 2011 and trying to figure out what was, you know, if there was any plans because my mother was still struggling with, you know, my father's death and all of that. So on this particular Sunday, right before Memorial Weekend, I had left. The church that I had gone that I go to for service and I actually went to my parents house because I usually would go there to to visit them well try to make a long story short without getting all of the, the the details that it turned out that my brother had for whatever reason had taken his life so I had basically walked in on a situation that I was not prepared for in any way and that was also a cause of my mother's death. And I don't want to get to, through all of that situation again, but I will tell you that walking into a situation like that was, I <laughs> talk about horrific, uh, I, I cannot tell you, uh, I was in shock, basically, what had happened. So to the, the try to get through all of that, that situation that had occurred and try to figure out why it had happened and, and because there was... No conversations about something like that was going to take place. Uh, my brother was basically, he was a physical, you know, he was a physical therapist. He was a, he was physically fit. He was a bodybuilder for the most part, very handsome, good looking guy. And 
can't even tell you why something like that happens. And I have spoken to people who have gone through situations where they've lost loved ones um, for suicide. So, and that was one of the reasons that when I talked about last week of going into like grief counseling at our church, because I had to figure out how to deal with that situation. Because my entire family was basically gone. And I had to, I was left with everything to have to get cleaned up, clean up the, and I was only going about 15 minutes at a time. You know, some people say take one day at a time. I was going about 15 minutes at a time. So without trying to stay in this, <laughs> trying to stay in this area, I'm just going to tell you that where I am now from where I was then, because there could have been a lot of decisions that I could have made or didn't make to stay in that situation and, and not push myself through it all. I mean, there was no one else really to make the decisions and what was going to happen after that with dealing with the estate, dealing with the cleanup, dealing with all of the financial issues. All of that was on my plate. There was really no one else for me to toss it to and say I needed that I needed help other than really basically some some people of my church family who were really by my side that were really more my family that got me through it all. And so I could have just thrown in the towel after it was all done and done nothing. But that's not the way that my life continued to go. And so in 2012, after all of that I went through a year later, I met, I met my wife to be Valerie, got married. And then after that, we talked about it before, we decided to be foster parents. So you have to look at that. I've been, I've been looking at that situation of going through such a horrific situation like that and then still moving through all of those, those waters because I really didn't even know how I was going to get through the next day. Had no idea other than through, through the faith that I have and the strength that God has, that had brought me through every single day. And so... I kind of look at it like for those of us who are dealing with their own challenges, I know there's people on here who have dealt with health problems. Mike dealt with a health situation that he's gone through. Brock talks about his issues with his financial issues. But I think that for this is, I didn't have a health issue. I didn't have financial issues. I didn't have a job issue. I had a family issue. And so one day you have a family and then the next day you don't. And I didn't give up. I could have just packed everything up and nobody had to hear from me again. Nobody would have criticized me. Nobody would have complained. Nobody would have called me and said, where are you at? I didn't have to. Nobody told me I had to do anything. I decided to do it on my own. I decided that, that for me to move forward in my life, that I got to get through it and I have to push myself to get through it. So that was that. And then in 2014, I'm going on nine years. This is the week that nine years ago, I got my license in real estate. Who would have thunk that? <laughs> Who would have thunk that all of those things, even leaving the state of Michigan, being down here in North Carolina? So the point I guess I want to make this morning to you is that if it's really something that you want to do, no matter what it is, no matter how difficult that you're going through, that you can do it. Because no one can hold you back from doing it. Because a lot of people are going to look at part of this race that happened in Pennsylvania to say, how did he win when he had a health issue? Or he didn't look the part. Or he couldn't communicate the part. Compared to someone else who probably thought he was a shoo-in. And maybe the person who thought he was a shoo-in thought that it's given. How hard do I need to work at it? because I know I'm gonna win. And then the person who was, was even though neck and neck, but veteran was probably like, I'm not gonna give up. I don't care what the media says about me. I don't care what I sound like. I know on the inside that I can do it. And again, I'm not trying to make a political statement, but I'm using it as an example that obviously he could have just turned away and done whatever, something different and said, I can't get over this issue that I had 
my medical issue. I could have turned away and said, I don't need to continue to live, to strive for anymore. So 831, um, those of you that are listening here this morning, it's, 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 you know, I wanted to challenge you this morning to think about that. To me, I was extremely motivated hearing that you know, someone has overcome so many challenges and could be a senator in the United States, how the United States Senate. And if someone like that can go through all of those things and still be elected, then what could stop you from doing anything that you want to do this morning? No matter what it is, you really have to put your mind to it. But, but as we said before, it's the steps, the small steps that you make every single day to keep moving you forward instead of moving yourself back. So that is really what I wanted to say to you this morning. I know there's probably a lot more I can talk about, but I just wanted to give you Take a look at, <laughs> this is where I'm at today. This is who I am. I have a child, seven years old. I mentioned this on, the, on yesterday with Brock. Um, I was helping Isaac with his math. Okay, he's, he's learning, his, he's learning his, his additions and his subtractions. But Isaac, who is a, you know, Isaac is an adopted child. He's not from, it's not from my bloodline, right? And so... He is learning his math in Spanish. I don't know Spanish. <laughs> and we're sitting down yesterday and he's learning how to, you know, take his, the top number 38 minus 27 or whatever it is. He's learning how to take, you know, take from the one side. He's learning his, the, the, his math, but he's doing it in Spanish. So there's questions that he's reading in Spanish. He's got to know the, the multi, he's got to know the equation and he's writing out the answers while I'm talking to him in English and Spanish. And he's seven years old. And so can you imagine what he can accomplish? Because he does it every single day. He's learning to play the piano right now. He has to do his piano lessons. He comes home four o'clock and he has his piano lessons. He's learning a Christmas song right now. Three months ago, all he wanted to do was bang the keys on the piano, but now he knows the notes. And it's difficult for him. He was crying at the beginning because I kept telling him, we're going to get through this, Isaac. We're going to get through this this morning, or we're going to get through this. I will help you get through your math. You, it's going to be okay. We're going to get through it. We finished one problem, and then we moved on to the next one. And then once he finished that problem, we went on to the next one. And I said, remember that that last one we just did, that was 15 minus nine, that quest. I go, look up, up there and you can see what you already did. And he's like, oh yeah, daddy, I did that. And then it was like, boom, this light went off in his head. So this morning when I'm taking him to school, I'm like going over with him some of the math that he was dealing with and he knew the answers. So that's what I got for you. I didn't have it all planned out, didn't have it all written down, just came from my heart. So. So what I got, 8.35. Anyone wants to come in, chime, whatever else is going on, more than welcome here. Well, I want to say thank you for sharing. Um, I remember one of the greatest gifts God has given me is the <laughs> opportunity that a lot of you share things with me that we don't typically post on Facebook and air. And I remember you sharing this story with me. We were sitting at um, Mamma Mia's Pizza in Cornelius. It was a sunny day. And I remember to a T this conversation. And I was, uh, for those of you that might be like floored by these things, I was literally floored by it as well. And, and the thing is, it always reminds me, you never can judge a book by its cover because we don't know the pages that are inside people's lives. And the the political stuff of what happened in Pennsylvania, like we don't understand what's in here. We don't understand what's up here. And emotion, in, in, there's a word, it's called defining moment. There's defining moments in our lives. And for those that are listening here today, you could have had a trigger this morning that had a defining moment. And 
I'm blessed and fortunate that a lot of you share things with me and text me and reach out to me and send me different things. And, and just as much as somebody's going to text you today, Greg, somebody is going to reach out to you and they are going to share with you something that happened into their life. And it's so important that when these things take place, that you understand you're helping Greg as much as Greg is helping you. And the reason why I get so emotional on this call is because today you didn't have this planned. This was not in the agenda today that I'm going to listen to. Greg. I had no idea what Greg was going to say. He didn't tell me what he was going to say. So when I come into these conversations, I'm as, as, as flabbergasted. And it brought me back to that, that pizza afternoon when you shared this story with me. And so I appreciate you sharing the story. And many of you that are on here got a blessing today of where you are in your life and where you come from and what is being said and, and what is being done. And, and there's a saying, you know, for every lesson, there's a blessing. And today, Greg shared with you a moment in his personal life and part of your defining moments that Greg talked about transforms you into where your next, what, what, what's next going to happen. Things don't happen to you. They happen for you. And at that time period you went through, Greg, I, I can't even imagine. I, I don't want to imagine that mm -hmm. because what you went through, but it made you who the person you are today. And you and I have grown over the years in our relationship and our friendship and where we are. And so I truly appreciate you sharing on here for those that watch the recording, for those that are on Zoom, for those that are on Facebook. You know, sometimes we get posts, I'll see things at six o'clock, seven o'clock at night. Stephanie's on here. She's a person that I know watches later. Sherry does. Pamela does. There's several of you, even on the West Coast. Brock, that was amazing today. Today was amazing. Not to say the other days aren't amazing, but when you get to hear people's lives and you get to go inside of them, you know, Dee just shared us on, she's adopted. I, I had no idea Dee was adopted, nor did she probably have, you know what, today I'm going to tell people I'm adopted. <laughs> like that probably was not on her agenda. <clears throat> and so there's other things that will transform throughout your day today. In some capacity, you will help somebody today. And Greg, you helped several people today for what you decided to share with you. And I want to thank you for putting this out here because it's so important to help other people and to grow. And this is what this call is all about. This is what these opportunities, because these are just opportunities that God created for us. And we just don't know what to do with them at the time, except to grow through them. So hats off to you, Greg. I appreciate you, man. I love you. And, I, and thank you for sharing that story today. Oh, well, you're welcome, man. Absolutely. So, yeah, I mean, so, you know, I mean, I, for me, with my faith that um, I don't live in that that atmosphere, and there are many people who who will do that, but uh, it's not something that I choose to do. So, but I thought it was important to bring it up and to talk about it, uh, and just so that would resonate with some people, and to maybe push some people on here that there's something really that you want to do that just don't hold back because you can do it. You really can. And reach out to us. Like Brock said, you want to talk about these things that you're dealing with in your life, you're struggling with, or even if it's a plan that you're trying to put together, no matter what it is, I mean, we can talk to you about it. We can help you if we can. I mean, but it is really, really important to communicate with others about what it is that you're doing. It really is. No matter what somebody says, no matter if somebody tells you, you can't do it. You could say, you know what? I'm going to do it. So, mm -hmm. all right. Uh, anyone else? You're more than welcome to come up this morning or have any questions about anything else that we're doing. Uh, we're more than happy to hear from you. Greg, put your, put your, um, you can go on Facebook, but put your cell phone in there. So in case somebody has something they want to reach out to, um, oh, yeah. you also can go on Facebook. A lot of times, um, 
everybody goes on Facebook and messages me in case they don't have my cell phone number um, that's out there. But a lot of our stuff is on Facebook. Feel free. This is this is what this is about is to reach out to us uh, on what, what we're doing and what we got going. And one of the things we're going to be doing on November 17th that I did yesterday with my coach was we write a letter to ourselves on defining moments. We write a letter and what pushes us towards the commitment of where we want to grow from. And so, you know, I, I think the defining moments are very, very important and they make us who we are today. And so I'm going to ask you this. I'm going to challenge you guys. I'm going to encourage you today to write down one or two defining moments in your life that have made you who you are today. And you don't have to share it with people if you don't want to, if you get excited and you want to post it on here in the Facebook world. If you want to post it in into the to the Zoom that comes in, well, you won't be able to do it on Zoom, but put it on Facebook if you like. If not, just write it and keep it to yourself. Put it inside yourself and carry it with you. And if you're able to come on next Thursday, I'd love to be able to possibly read it. I'd love to be able to hear it um, for those that want to be a part of it and be able to share with us next Thursday at the North Harbor. And it is live. Um, we won't have it out there in recording because I think it's important because we talk about deep stuff and then we will make the decision at that point, whether or not we're going to pay to have it advertised or what we're going to do. What I've learned in coaching, there's so many different things. There really is like, I have no idea what I was getting myself into. I had my little defining cry session yesterday for those that heard about it. Like I was, it was, it was, it's been a tough couple of days, but that's another story. I'm not getting into, <laughs> I'm not getting into my little sob story, but uh, anyways, <laughs> guys, we appreciate you all being here. Greg, I love you, man. I appreciate you, what you shared here today. If you guys loved it, put hearts, give out some, some comments on there. A lot of you did that in the Facebook today. You know, when people have to pull this out, this isn't like up here. Okay. This isn't in the, this is deep down in here to bring out, to trigger emotions, visions of everything that people go through and grow through happen here. So give him some love, give him some thumbs up, reach out to him. His phone number's on here. Um, we did have a great uh, coaching session yesterday. If you want to get the recording of yesterday, send me an email, put it in the Facebook post, put it in your Zoom because I do get the copy of the Zoom chats that if you want to see the three, two, one, buy down, the two, one, buy down, the one, zero, buy down my scripts of what I used. Make sure you put your email on here. I will get you the recording. Um, next Tuesday, I'm actually in the Zoom world. I've been very blessed and fortunate. I'm going to be teaching in New York. Then I'm going to be teaching in North Carolina and then South Carolina. And I got a couple other states that I'm working with on going to share with them the mindset of what we're doing. So, uh, and then next Thursday, the link is in here. Make sure you take a look at that for uh, joining us next Thursday for a call. I'm going to be, I got a couple cool events. I'm going to be tomorrow. Uh, I think Christopher's on here. Um, he I'm going to be at Top Golf tomorrow morning. Well, I think it's at noontime, but um, go to our Facebook page, Brock Zivian's Mindset Motivation. I love to meet you guys. I love to be able to see you face to face. I know a couple of us will be there, but uh, come on out. It's a great, great thing. I love Top Golf and food, drinks, and some education on the whole buyer side. I'm, I'm a sponge. I want to learn all this. So I'll be at Top Golf tomorrow uh, around noon. So love to be able to have you there. Uh, yes, Chris just said it. So Chris, if you're on here and you want to post that uh, link on the Facebook, because I like to be able to see you. I like to be able to meet people. So I'll be there tomorrow. Looking forward to that. And uh, so next week, we got a lot of things going on, guys. It's a great opportunity to grow. Don't let the winter season and not let you grow get in front of people get and talk to people engage this is what it's all about it is 8 45 greg send us off i'm gonna hand the baton to you thank you all greg send us off buddy all right man thank you all for being here appreciate you all all your kind words uh means a lot to me and uh we uh we really, uh -huh. really appreciate you being here tomorrow christian will be with us tomorrow. It's Thursday, Christian will be here. We want you all back at 8.15. And as we said before, if you really like what we're doing here, share our stuff on your social media. Tell people about it. Tell our agents about it. Get them on here. 
and uh, we appreciate you. Have a, all a great day. I am going to go to a broker's open in a little while and have fun what I do in real estate. All right. So I hope you all have a great day as well. So see you all soon. Take care. Bye, all.